Hi, welcome to the fourth part of practice prelims question series. In this part, we will be discussing a set of more than 25 questions that will be helpful for prelims 2020. The PDF link of the discussed questions have been given in the description box and it is also provided in the comment section. Now let's proceed to the first question. This question is with reference to multidisciplinary drifting observatory for the study of Arctic climate. They have given two statements and are asking which of the above statements are correct. First statement, it aims to explore the Arctic climate system only during summer. Now this statement is incorrect. This is because this mosaic expedition has started from September 2019, aims to be for a period of one year till September 2020. So it even explores the Arctic climate during winter months in the northern hemisphere. So the first statement is incorrect. Second statement, India is a participating country in this mission. This statement is wrong because according to the Mosaic expedition, there are 19 partner countries and India is not one among them. However, China is one of the expedition partners. So this means both the statements are incorrect. Therefore, the correct answer for this question is option D, neither one nor two. Now this question is with respect to airspace of a country. Now they have given two statements and are asking to select the correct answer using the given code. First statement, airspace of a country includes the space above its territory and also the outer space. Airspace of a country includes the space above the territory of a country, but it does not include outer space. Outer space is free. This is because the Outer Space Treaty of 1967 says that airspace ends where the outer space begins. So therefore, the first statement is incorrect. The second statement, a country has sovereign power over its airspace and can regulate the flights and persons in its airspace using its laws. Now this statement is correct. Using a civil aviation law, a country can regulate the flights and also can regulate the persons using its airspace. So the second statement is correct, first statement is wrong. So the correct answer for this question is option B, two only. Now the third question, which of the following countries are members of both SARC and SCO? Now SARC means South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation. SCO means Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Now they have given four nations and are asking to choose the correct answer from the options given. Now, see India is SARC country and India is also part of SCO. Same is the case of Pakistan. Pakistan is in SARC and also in SCO. And Afghanistan is part of SARC? Yes. But is it part of Shanghai Cooperation Organization? Yes. It is part of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. But is it a member or an observer? It is not a member. It is just an observer. And therefore, three should not be there. So Afghanistan is not a member in both these organizations. Now coming to China, China is not a member of SARC but a member of SCO. So only India and Pakistan of the given options are members of both SARC and SCO. So the answer for this question is option A, 1 and 2 only. Now this question is with respect to plan B. They have given uh, four options and are asking which among the following best describes the objective of plan B. Plan B is related to the flying insect B. So by looking at the options, you can eliminate option B since it talks about energy efficiency. If you take first statement, it is also wrong because it talks about conservation of bumblebees. You can recollect that the plan B under the innovation award given by railway ministry. And this award was awarded to Northeastern Frontier Railway and was related to saving elephants by getting them driving away from the railway tracks. Otherwise, they will meet an accident due to the running train and they will be dead. So our answer should mention about rail tracks, which is given in option C. So the option C, it aims to install devices that play or imitate the sound of swarm of buzzing honeybees to drive away the pachyderms from the rail tracks. Pachy means thick, derms means skin, thick skinned mammals such as elephants, hippopotamus and rhinoceros. So the correct answer for this question is option C. This question is with reference to United Nations Human Rights Council. In the first statement, they have given two statements and are asking which among the above statements are not correct. So the first statement, it is responsible for strengthening the promotion and protection of human rights around the globe. This statement is correct and that is one of the main purpose of existence of this Human Rights Council of United Nations. Since this statement is correct, 
and they are asking which of the statements are not correct the statement one should not be in the answer and the second statement india was elected as a member country from january 2019 for a term of 3 years this statement is correct because the council is made up of 47 member states including india that is from january 2019 for a term of 3 years the council's membership is actually based on equitable geographical distribution with respect to five areas they are african states asia pacific states latin american and caribbean states western european and other states and eastern european states if you take african states and asia pacific states totally 26 seats 13 seats for african 13 for asia pacific the eight seats goes for latin american and caribbean states seven for western european and other states six for eastern european states and india was elected as a member country from jan 2019 for a term of three years in this human rights council so the second statement is also correct and india was elected last year in the month of october 2018 so both the statements are correct so the correct answer for this question is not both one and two but neither one nor two Option D is the correct answer. Now this question is with reference to Right to Information Act of 2005. They have given two statements and are asking which of the above statements are correct. The first statement, Right to Information does not include Right to Inspect the Work, Documents and Records of a Public Authority. We know if we need any information from the government, we write an application and we request the information to be given in terms of document or electronic media also. We can request them to give it in a pen drive or compact disc or even floppy disk according to Right to Information Act. But does it include the right to inspect the work or the documents or records of a public authority? Yes. Under section 2 subsection J, if you see the definition of right to information, in addition to accessing documents, all these things, it also includes right to inspect the work or the documents or the records of a public authority you can physically go there and inspect all those things so the given statement here is wrong second statement the central information commission or state information commission has the power to require the public authority to compensate the complainant for any loss or other detriment suffered now this statement is correct according to the act under section 19 subsection 8 b of rta act 2005 the commissions CIC and SIC has the power to require the public authority to compensate the petitioner. So the second statement is correct. So the correct answer here for this question is option B 2 only. We should know that RTA Act in section 4 subsection 2 tells that it shall be a constant endeavor of every public authority to take steps to provide as much information on its own to the public at regular intervals through various means of communications including internet so that the public shall have minimum resort to use right to information act to get information but how far this is in reality we know so with this now let's move on to next question now this question is with reference to the school education quality index they have given two statements and are asking which of the above statements are correct the first statement its important domains are learning outcomes access outcomes infrastructure and facility for outcomes and equity outcomes for the assessment purposes there are two categories one is outcomes then the second one is governance processes aiding outcomes so here in the first category of outcomes there are four domains so all the four domains are mentioned in the first statement therefore the first statement is correct in the second statement, it is released by Niti Ayog. Now, this statement is also correct. However, for the preparation and assessment purposes, the work was done in a collaborative mode with the support from Ministry of Human Resource and Development and also World Bank and other experts from education sector. Why these indices, why these reports are released by Niti Ayog? See, one of the mandate of Niti Ayog is to bring outcome focus among the central ministries and also among the states. So in this question, both the statements are correct. Therefore, the correct answer for this question is option C, both 1 and 2. Now this question is with reference to the components of current account. They have given net goods, net services, net primary and secondary income, net foreign direct investment. Net goods is there, net service is there, net primary and secondary income is there, but there is no net FDI. This is because foreign direct investment is a component of capital account, not current account. Therefore, the answers below should not have number 4. So, the correct answer for this question is option C, 1, 2 and 3. 
the term paleo channel recently seen in news is related to which among the following firstly they are saying period between cretaceous period and jurassic period so this is not the answer for this question see the triassic period was the first period of mesozoic era and this triassic period occurred between 251 million years and 199 million years ago so when triassic period is the first period so what is the second period in the mesozoic era that is jurassic period so this occurred uh, from 199 million years ago to 145 million years ago approximately Jurassic period followed Triassic period of the Mesozoic era. After the Jurassic period, we could see Cretaceous period. This Cretaceous period was the last and the longest segment of Mesozoic era. They are saying it lasted for approximately 79 million years. So in Mesozoic era, there is Triassic period, Jurassic period and Cretaceous period. Now coming to the second option, they are saying this is a recently discovered largest flying animal. Now this option is also not correct because the recently discovered largest flying animal is Cyrodraken boreas. The correct answer for this question is option C, remnants of once active rivers. Now this question is with reference to Armed Forces Tribunal. They have given two statements and are asking which of the statements above are correct. First statement, its chairperson and members are appointed by the President after consulting the Chief Justice of India. This statement is correct and it is based on the Armed Forces Tribunal Act of 2007. Now the second statement, it has jurisdiction over Indian Coast Guard. Now this statement is wrong because it has jurisdiction over the persons covered under the Army Act, the Navy Act and the Air Force Act. Indian Coast Guard does not come under the ambit of these legislations. Therefore the correct answer for this question is option A, one only. Now see this uh, map reading based question. They have given five countries and are asking which of the above countries share border with Turkey. So whenever you have a question with respect to Turkey, particularly in the context of borders, you see whether one of the countries is Azerbaijan. Because there is a special fact, if you notice in this map, apart from the mainland of Azerbaijan country, there is a separate part of Azerbaijan territory called as Nakhchivan Autonomous Region. This part borders with Turkey. So this becomes a potential fact for a prelims question. So in this question, Syria, Bulgaria, Iraq, Armenia and Azerbaijan, all these five countries share border with Turkey. So the correct answer for this question is option D, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. In addition to this, Turkey also shares border with the Mediterranean Sea, Black Sea, Greece, Georgia and Iran. Now let us move on to next question. Now this question is with reference to United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. They have given three statements and are asking which of the above statements are correct. First statement, there are 17 goals and 169 targets under the agenda. Now this statement is correct. It has 17 goals and 169 targets. There are three main dimensions under sustainable development goals. One is economic growth, then social inclusion and finally environmental protection. That is we can group all these goals and targets under these three dimensions. Now come to second statement. It states that sustainable development goals are legally binding on the member countries on United Nations. If this statement is correct, it would mean that if member countries do not achieve these goals and targets by 2030 or by appropriate time limits, then appropriate actions or punitive actions or sanctions can be made on member countries. This is not so. That means these goals are not legally binding on member countries of United Nations. The success with respect to SDG is totally based on countries' own development policies, plans and programs. Countries are expected to make appropriate framework and policies so as to achieve these goals. So these goals are not legally binding. This means you can eliminate option A, C and D because these options are saying that statement 2 is correct. So by this you can arrive at the correct answer option B, 1 and 3 only. Now this third statement. It states it has a target for the reduction of global road traffic deaths and injuries by 50% by the year 2020. Now this becomes a target under SDG goal 3, good health and well-being. It is actually target 3.6.
Goal 3 is about ensuring healthy lives and promoting well-being at all ages and ensuring this is essential to sustainable development. So correct answer is option B, 1 and 3. This question is with reference to Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. They have given three statements and are asking which of the above statements are incorrect. The first statement, it provides at least 100 days of guaranteed wage employment in a financial year to every rural household whose adult members volunteer to do skilled manual work. So this statement is wrong because we know that the scheme guarantees wage employment to do unskilled manual work. When we say skilled work, it refers to a work that requires workers to have a certain amount of specialized training or to have a learned skill set to perform a particular work. And when we mean unskilled labor, a person to carry out a particular work he or she does not require any specialized training or any skill set to perform the task so the first statement is incorrect any answer for this question should have the first statement so you can easily eliminate option C now let's see the second statement it is saying that it is implemented by Ministry of Labor and Employment now when you see the question with reference to Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act just by seeing the word employment you cannot say this statement is correct because this scheme is being implemented by ministry of rural development because it aims to provide guaranteed wage employment to every rural household so the second statement is also incorrect so you see the options which option has statement one and statement two as incorrect we can find only one option, option D. So the correct answer for this question is option D because the question asks which of the above statements are incorrect. Now let's see the third statement. Third statement is telling that the central government is having the power to make rules and to amend this particular scheme that is created under the act. Note that the central government has the powers to make rules and to amend the act and not the scheme. With respect to the scheme, it is the state government that has the powers to make rules and to amend the MG Narega scheme. So the third statement is also incorrect. So the correct answer for this question is option D. Now this question is with reference to biomedical waste management rules of 2016. If you see the preliminary examination question paper this year, they have uh, dealt with uh, extended producer responsibility with respect to e-waste management and handling rules of 2011. In one of the options, we can also find biomedical waste management rules. So a similar question can be expected. So in this question, they have given two statements and are asking which of the above statements are correct. Correct statements they are asking. So the first statement, it covers the blood donation camps and vaccination camps apart from hospitals and clinics. In addition to normal or conventional healthcare facilities such as hospitals and healthcare clinics, this biomedical waste management rules also covers blood donation camps and vaccination camps. So the first statement is correct. Now the second statement, it provides for using barcode system to tag containers carrying biomedical waste. Now this statement is also correct because that is one of the salient feature. This barcode system for bags and containers containing biomedical waste will help improve the segregation, transportation and disposal system. Therefore, this statement is also correct. So the correct answer for this question is option C, both 1 and 2. Now the question is with respect to endosulfan. Now they have given four options, a vaccine in testing stage to cure Ebola, an endothermic chemical reaction, a toxic pesticide, a new gas detected outside solar system. Now the correct answer for this question is a toxic pesticide. Endosulfon is a pesticide that kills insects and also ticks and mites. These ticks and mites become part of Acari subclass in arachnids. Now this question they are asking us to choose the correct pair from the given list of UNESCO's World Heritage Site and the category in which they are listed. Now Kanjanjanga National Park. This national park in the state of Sikkim is the only site in India that is categorized as mixed heritage site. So the first pair is wrongly matched. So if you know that the first pair is wrongly matched, you can easily arrive at the correct answer because option A, option C and option D have first pair in it. So you can easily eliminate A, C and D. So option B is the correct answer for this question. The Sundarbans National Park is listed as natural heritage site in the list of world heritage sites of UNESCO. So only the third pair is correct. That is the Jaipur city in Rajasthan is classified under cultural heritage site. 
So the correct answer is option B, three only. Now this question is with reference to National Mission on Natural Language Translation. There are two statements and they are asking which of the statements are correct. The first statement, the National Mission on Natural Language Translation aims to remove the barrier of requirement of high level faculty in English to learn science and technology. Now this statement is correct and that is one of the objective of the Mission on Natural Language Translation. Here the word faculty will take the meaning of the word knowledge in this context. And the second statement, the Ministry of Human Resource Development, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting and the Department of Science and Technology are the lead agencies in this mission. Now this statement is wrong because HRD ministry is involved, Department of Science and Technology is involved, but the other ministry that is not Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, but the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. And this mission on natural language translation helps to provide access to teaching and researching material in two languages. One is in English and the other is in the native Indian language of the particular individual. So the correct answer for this question is option A, one only. Now let us move on to next question. Now this question is with reference to Information Fusion Center, Indian Ocean region. They have given three statements and are asking which of the above statements are correct by selecting the correct answer using the codes given below. First statement, it is established with the vision of strengthening maritime security in the Indian Ocean region and beyond. Now this statement is correct. This center aims to improve security by acting as a maritime information hub for this region. It also collaborates with similarly working centers of other countries. Therefore, the first statement is correct. Now, the second statement, it works under Ministry of Defense, Government of India. Now, this statement is correct. This information center will be jointly administered by Indian Navy and Indian Coast Guard under the Ministry of Defense. Now, the third statement, the oceanic region beyond 60 degrees southern latitude is also part of Indian Ocean region. Now this statement is incorrect. This is because the region beyond 60 degrees southern latitude is part of Antarctic Ocean, not Indian Ocean. The Indian Ocean region is geographically bounded by Asia and the North, Africa and West, Australia and East and Antarctic Ocean in the South. Therefore, the third statement is incorrect here. So you can eliminate option B, option C, option D and therefore only option A is correct. Now this question is with respect to traditional medicinal practices that comes under Ayush system of healthcare. The Ministry of Ayush was formed on November 2014 by Government of India to ensure optimal development and propagation of Ayush systems of healthcare. Which of the following traditional medicinal practices comes under Ayush system of healthcare? Ayurveda, Sova Rigpa, Naturopathy, Unani, Allopathy. Ayurveda, Sova Rigpa, Naturopathy, Unani. These come under this Ayush system of healthcare in addition to Yoga, Homeopathy and Siddha. But Allopathy is not one of the traditional medicinal practices that comes under this system of healthcare. Allopathy is a medicinal practice that uses chemical formulations such as drugs to treat the symptoms and diseases. So here the correct answer for this question is option C, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Once you can eliminate allopathy, you can eliminate option A, B and D because it has 5 allopathy in it. So the correct answer for this question is option C, 1, 2, 3 and 4 only. Now this question they are asking, recently the dam safety bill 2019 was passed in Lok Sabha. Water comes under which list in Schedule 7 of Constitution of India. Water as such is in state list in entry 17. It includes water supplies, irrigation and canals, drainage and embankments, water storage and water power. But this is subject to the provisions of entry 56 of Union List. When we go to Union List, entry 56 talks about regulation and development of interstate rivers and river valleys. So the correct answer for this question is option B, state list. Water comes under state list. Question is having three statements and are asking to choose the correct statements. First statement, FATF is an intergovernmental organization formed under the initiative of United Nations. Now this statement is wrong because it is formed under the initiative of G7 countries in the year 1989. Now the second statement, its objective is to combat money laundering and terrorism financing. Now the statement is correct. Third statement, India and Pakistan are members of FATF. India is a member of FATF but Pakistan is not. 
and Pakistan is presently in the grey list of FATF. So the third statement is wrong. And this FATF at present has 39 members, 37 countries, two regional organizations. One is European Commission, another one is Gulf Cooperation Council. And the recently admitted member during the June plenary meeting was Saudi Arabia. So in this question, statements 1 and 3 are wrong. Therefore, only statement 2 is correct. Therefore, the correct answer for this question is option B. Now, this question is with reference to conjunctivitis. Conjunctivitis is also known as pink eye in the western world, particularly USA. In our country, it is also called as Madras eye. They have given two statements and are asking which of the above statements are correct. First statement, all forms of conjunctivitis are contagious in nature. Now, this statement is incorrect because only bacterial conjunctivitis and viral conjunctivitis are contagious in nature. But there are also other causes of madras eye. For example, loose eyelash that falls in eye and then improper management of contact lenses and then allergens, smoke, dust, all these things also can cause conjunctivitis. And these are not contagious in nature. Therefore, the first statement is incorrect. Now, the second statement, conjunctivitis is caused by both viruses and bacteria. Now, this statement is correct because it could be caused by both viruses and bacteria. If the second statement was given as conjunctivitis is caused by both viruses and bacteria only, then the statement would have been incorrect. So, overall for this question, only the second statement is correct. Therefore, the correct answer is option B, 2 only. Now, this question is with reference to Rashtriya Gokul Mission. This mission was launched in 2014 under National Program for Bovine Breeding and Dairy Development. One of the objectives of the mission is upgradation of non-descript cattle using elite indigenous breeds. Now, this statement is correct second statement it was launched by ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare now this statement is incorrect because this mission comes under the ministry of fisheries animal husbandry and dairying some of the other objectives are development and conservation of indigenous breeds enhancement of milk production and productivity breed improvement program for indigenous cattle breeds so only the first statement is correct, second statement is incorrect. So the correct answer for this question is option A, one only. Now this question is with reference to Land Port Authority of India. Two statements are given, they are asking which of the above statements are correct. First statement, its objective is to plan, develop, construct, manage and maintain integrated check posts in the border areas. Now this statement is correct. Second statement, it is a statutory body under Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. It is a statutory body, yes, because it was established by the Land Ports Authority of India Act of 2010. But it is under the admin control of Department of Border Management of Ministry of Home Affairs. Therefore, the second statement is incorrect. So the correct answer for this question is option A, one only. Here, they have given island group and islands. They are asking which of the above pairs is or are correct. We know that on the eastern side it is Polynesia. On the west above North Australia and northeastern Australia we could see Melanesia and north of Melanesia we can see Micronesia. And important islands in Melanesia, Fiji, New Caledonia, Vanuatu, Solomon Islands and Papua New Guinea. Two important islands in Micronesia are Giribati and Marshall Islands. So Marshall Islands comes in Micronesia. First pair is correct. Solomon Islands is in Melanesia. One of the island under the provincial government of Solomon Islands is Tulagi Island. So Tulagi Island is also a part of Melanesia. Three important islands in Polynesia. They are Hawaii Island, New Zealand and Easter Island. So the given pair with respect to Hawaiian Islands is also correct. So the correct answer for this question is option A, all the above. Now this question is with reference to the INF Treaty, the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. They have given three statements and are asking which of the above statements are correct. First statement, it is for the elimination of intermediate range missiles and shorter range missiles. Now this statement is correct. And this treaty required the destruction of ground launched ballistic missiles 
and ground launched cruise missiles so that has a range capability between 500 kilometers and 5500 kilometers now the second statement is it's a trilateral treaty between india united states and russia this statement is incorrect because it is signed between us and union of soviet socialist republics the present russian federation india is not a part of the treaty so the second statement is wrong that means option b and option d cannot be the answers because they have statement 2 in them now come to statement 3 it says it only prohibits the flight testing of the banned missiles now this is incorrect because it had a total ban on the possession production and flight testing of the prohibited missile systems so the correct answer for this question is option a one only because only the first statement is correct this question is with reference to defense institute of physiology and allied sciences which among the following statements are correct three statements are given First statement, it is a defense laboratory under Defense Research and Development Organization. Now the statement is correct. The second statement states, its principal purpose is identification of high altitude physiology, nutrition and biochemistry of humans in severe stress environment. Now this statement is correct and it is one of the main purpose with which DIPAS is established. And it also provides ergonomic assessment of workstations and how man and machine interface. The third statement, it was constituted at the time of formation of DRDO. Now note that DRDO was formed in the year 1958. Some 10 major institutions and laboratories were set up at the time of formation of DRDO and uh, Defense Institute of Physiology and Allied Sciences is not one of them. However, it was formed after a gap of 4 years in 1962 under DRDO. So the third statement is incorrect here. So the correct answer for this question is option B one and two only with this we come to the end of practice question discussion session if you like the video click the like button comment share and subscribe to shankar Ace academy youtube channel for more updates and content on civil service exam preparation